Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Uh, today I have my friend Jamie in, butcher, author, educator. Um, you work with Westside Beef who has provided us with half a hog and we're breaking it down and today we're gonna break down the loin. That's right. So there's a whole lot going on here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, so many different options too. So we just had to have a conversation about how we want this broke down. Um, and I think we've come to some conclusions. Excellent. Let's get started. <laughs> what are we going to do? So first we're going to take off the tenderloin. It's kind of buried in here a little bit okay. and, it, and it can be a little bit tricky to get out. So what I like to do is just kind of remove a little bit of the exterior fat from it. Focus on removing this exterior fat from it so I can get a better look at the tenderloin itself. So I'm just kind of scoring as I move along. And I can just pull a lot of this fat away. So there we go. So now I've got a clear look at my tenderloin. I can see that right there. That's right. I'm, and I'm not a butcher. <laughs> you almost <laughs> are after today. <laughs> so okay. I'll remove a little bit more here. So now, because that tenderloin's cradled right into the back there, what I like to do is I'll run my knife along the back. Like okay. so, right? Yep. So now I'm just kind of scoring it out. And now I'm going to focus on this area up here. I'm just going to use my knife just to kind of release it from the bone that it's cradled into. Then I can get my hands together and I can actually just pull just, a lot of it out. pull it out. Yeah. So once I've done that, again, it's kind of cradled into a bone here. So I can just kind of work that tenderloin out. So now I've got my pork tenderloin out. So that's the, that's the first cut out, and I guess, obviously, you would clean this up. That's right. Pull off the silver skin and yep. the fat. Okay. Yeah. What's what's next? So I like to split it up into three different sections. We've got our our rack section here with the ribs. Okay. We've got our midloin in this section here, and then we've got our sirloin. So I like to split it up into those three sections. Okay. okay. I'm happy to walk you through it if you like. Excellent. Okay. Where, do I, where do I start? So with the steak knife. What we need first before we even pick up any knives is we need to identify the uh, disc that we're going to go through. Okay. So where the two, where the backbone kind of meets up with the tailbone here, where this would be the, where the tailbone shoots out, we've got a disc that uh, joins those two. Okay. So that's not the one we want. We want one in. Okay. Okay. So that's our marker, but we're identifying this one as the uh, vertebrae or the disc that we want to go through. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to use the steak knife and we're just going to go, we're going to sink our knife into that disc. Oh, right? just goes right in. Exactly. And that's as far as you need to go. So now okay. what you're going to do is you're just going to pull the knife back towards, and you're going to cut down as far as you can. And we want to go back through that cut and cut again all the way down to the table as much as we can. Okay, right down to the block? Yep. Now what you want to see you do is roll the whole loin away from you. Okay. So now open up that cut, and what I want to see you do is use the knife and cut right down. It'll make sure you're aligning right with that cut. There. Okay, perfect. Now take the knife out. Okay. And what we're going to do is you're going to roll the loin back to where we started. So now what you're going to do is you're going to take this sirloin with two hands and literally fold it back just on. Fold yep. it back on itself and, and, it just, comes out. and it just breaks off. Breaks off. Okay. So this is... The sirloin. So then what happens with the sirloin? So we can bone it out, skin it, and cut chops out of it. Or we can just remove this tailbone, leave the skin on, tie it up, and do a roast. Either or. Okay. Um... Let's do a roast. Okay, so what we need to do is we need to take this tailbone out. So what I do is I find my, the knife, uh, the weak spot between the bones where I can put my knife in. Okay. And then I literally just break that tailbone off. So that allows me to take the tailbone off and take a little bit of that trim with it, set that aside. So we could leave this as a bone in sirloin like so. And what I would do is get some twine, score the skin, like so, and just deep enough so you're just puncturing the skin, right? And then that's going to allow me to tie the roast up. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a few strings on this. Okay. Just a little bit of tension on it. Okay, I'm standing right here, watching closely, and that knot is a mystery to me. 
<laughs> you know, it's funny. I, I always preface in the workshops like, hey, you know, if uh, anybody wants to stick around, they can learn the knot after the class because I always find that about 99% of the people will mentally struggle with it and lose sleep over it that night and one person will step up and get it the first time. So there we are. So there's our nice tied sirloin roast with the bone in it that after roast it again, the fat will render out and it'll open it up and have some nice crackling That nice on crackling on top. Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to split the midloin from the rack. Okay. Okay, so in order to do that, we need to identify where the very first rib is. And we're going to follow that up with our finger to the disc that it aligns with. And okay. so the same sort of... You're going to follow it on an angle? Not necessarily. So once we've identified where that rib meets up with that disc, we yep. know that there's a rib on that disc. Yep. So we want the first vacant one. Okay. Yeah, so we wouldn't be going through that rib. So that's just, again, another marker. So what we're going to do is the exact same thing that you did before with the sirloin. Okay. So lodge the top of your knife in there. Use the base of it. Exactly. Now we'll go all the way through as much as we can. Perfect. Now roll the whole line away again. Okay. And then match up with that cut. Perfect. Same same deal as last time? Yep. Fold it? Exactly. Then if you need to, you can use a knife just to cut that little bit of flesh. Okay, so the midloin is off then. Yep. What happens with that one? Okay, so the midloin, again, there's a few different things that we could do. Um, first and foremost is we could just cut this into chops, okay. uh, bone in chops. So we could do the exact same thing, and I'll just demonstrate on the first one here. We'll just go through, and we're going to make individual chops out of it. So now, it's kind of critical that we are making sure that we're matching up with those cuts that we did before. So then there's one. That's a good looking chop. I would agree. And that's the difference between knife work that's right to make a chop and bandsaw to make a chop that's right so you're kind of you're at the mercy of how this animal developed over yeah. its lifetime so we're using we're utilizing the discs in between the vertebrae to dictate how thick our chops are going to be yeah so would you like to try one sure okay. please so exactly the same process as before so i find there's the that's right there's the disc and again we'll make sure that we're cutting nice square chops and going all the way down as far as we can. You can even go back over that cut if you want, just to, and then we'll roll it. And same, just follow. That's right. Um, and then fold. That's right. Okay. Yep. Smaller knife, just to. Just to go through. There we go. And there you go. Chop. Perfect. That is a pork chop. That is a pork chop. That is amazing. <laughs> and I, I guess I guess so many of us, myself included, we go to the grocery store mm -hmm. and you see the, the, the chops that are super thin, yeah, that are that are cut on a bandsaw. Yeah. And I think that's that's what I want. Yeah, like I mean for me the 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 upside to this is removing the opportunity to overcook it. Yes. You can still cook it to we like to say a blush of pink yes. in pork. Yep. Um, so whether that, whatever that kind of relates to as far as an internal temperature, I think it's around that 140 mark. Yeah. Um, and then you just have a nice pork chop that, you know what, not everyone has to have this on their plate. You can share this. <laughs> well, and, and so and I will often buy a bone-in pork roast from this end mm -hmm. at the grocery store, yeah. four or five bones, and then just and cut it myself into a right. thick chop so that I can have a nice thick chop. And Julie and I will share one because you, I'm at the age now that I can't eat a whole one. I, I would argue that you probably, no one needs to eat a whole no, one. No one needs to, <laughs> yes. 24-year-old me might argue that point. 52-year-old sure. me says, I don't need it. Agreed. But that's, that's an amazing pork chop. Yep. Okay, so the rest of this is the same, same thing? Correct. Um, or you could do boneless. Yeah, or we could just take it, remove the bones and then do the, exactly the same thing that we did with the sirloin where we can just kind of truss it up with some string and roast it off as a whole loin. Excellent. Yep. Okay, so let's move on to this section. Okay. So... This, because I'm not a, a roving butcher with a, that travels with a bandsaw, requires a little, little bit more uh, sweat and hopefully not tears. We have to cut off the chine? We're going to cut the chine off, right? Okay. So what I like to do is, this is theoretically a one-person job, so I'll go ahead and take care of this. So what I'm looking to do, so what I want to use is the base of these ribs. They almost kind of come down into a round yep. uh, or a teardrop. 
Um, I like to go right about halfway through those. And okay. I'm just going to make a mark with my knife so that when I get the, band, the hand saw out, I can just follow that line. And that just allows me to just cut in between all the ribs, making sure that I can stay on that line. And I'm just listening and feeling for that opportunity where I actually cut through the ribs. And through there, might just take a little bit more. Okay, so I'm through. Now what I can do is, I'm just gonna come through with my knife. And I'm just gonna cut through and remove that back, what we call the chine bone. Okay, so now I'm through. That gives us the opportunity to now start cutting it and portioning it into bone and rib chops. So one thing I should mention is that before we do actually start cutting this into chops, there is a membrane that exists on these ribs yes. that I like to take off. So I always like to start at the smallest part, the smallest ribs, Okay. and I'll just kind of get my finger in there, and you, just, and you can see where it exists. It just pulls off. Exactly. And then what we can do is we can just pull the whole thing right off. You made that look effortless. <laughs> it doesn't always go like it that. It doesn't always go like that. There are days where I have struggled to pull that off, and I think there's a trick. There's a way to do it. Okay, so now, Glenn, what I'm going to have you do is I'm going to have you do exactly the same thing that we did with the belly chops. Okay. We're going to go in between each rib. Okay. Now, is there, is there a preference that one end of this is tastier than the other, that one end is more tender than the other? I would argue that maybe the two kind of meet somewhere in the middle, but because this is closer to the shoulder, yes. it may have just a little bit less tenderness. Okay. And as we work our way into the loin, where we have the singular muscle, this might be a little bit more tender on this side. So, But I often find the inverse is flavor. Agreed, like I'm, 100% of the time, I would always take this first chop. I think it's worth pointing out that if you haven't watched the whole breakdown of the whole animal, and you should, this will play into where we broke the shoulder off. Because we were in that episode, we were talking about how many ribs to count in. We took four. In That's there, right. right. We okay. went, went on four. Some people will go three. Some okay. people will go two. Whatever the case may be. When you cut your first chop, yes. because we broke it between the fourth and fifth rib, you will have no shoulder blade to deal with. So that's kind of another thing that I... Okay. After a few years, kind of went, wait a second, if I break it one rib over, I'm not going to have that shoulder blade to deal with, which won't make this uh, a bit of a floppy mess to deal with. Yep. So try, let's cut that first chop off and see how we go. So in Just between, in between the ribs, trying to focus on making a nice square cut. I tried. No, you did. Okay. Yeah. So that is the first... Exactly. That's our first rib chop. Okay. Uh, and we don't have any shoulder blade in there. So normally what I find is uh, if we break it too close to the front of the animal, we're going to have a lot of the shoulder blade in there. So this just breaking it one rib over negates that from happening. So now we would just go through and just do chops all the way through. What if I wanted to turn this into a uh, crown roast or standing roast? So we would French out those ribs. Okay. These ribs would come down probably about an inch, inch and a half or so, and we would French them out, meaning that we would clean all the meat in between the bones, and then we would bend it like so into a crown roast. Okay. Um, and what happens with this section of, of meat here? That just becomes trim? We would normally find its way into the sausage. Into the sausage. Yep. 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 Okay, so this could be a standing rib roast. This could be chops. But this could also be back ribs, right? Correct. Let's do some back ribs. Okay, sounds good. Um, so what I need to do is I'll stand it up as if we were doing a standing rib roast. Okay. Um, this just allows me to kind of uh, get a better line of sight on how I want to... I guess it's about dictating how much meat I want to leave on the bones. Because sometimes you see them, there's almost no meat. That's right. And sometimes right. there's so much meat that it's... It might as well just be a chop. Okay. So the first cut I like to do is I go right against the bone because this top part here is what's called tail meat. It's not the most tender. Okay. So I like to take that tail meat off and then my next cut is really going to be what determines how much meat I'm leaving on the bone because I'm angling my knife away from the ribs, the tip of my knife. Okay. Right? So now this is probably the most critical because now I'm going into the loin and I'm just going to walk my knife 
along those ribs like so, right? So now what I've got is the opportunity to come down and release from the ribs. So now what I've got is a good amount of meat left on these back ribs. What would you do with what's left here? So this can go a few different directions, right? We can, we can butterfly it open and season it uh, and then roll it back up so we'd have like a nice kind of pinwheeled roast. Okay. Or we could just simply roll, roll it in half like so and twine it and have a nice loin roast as well. Okay. So, or we could simply just do it into chops all the way through. So, yeah, lots of options. And when you do it into chops, you would leave this section in as well? We certainly could. Um, much like the belly chops that were those elongated chops, like yep. we would just have different kind of muscular uh, features in here, but I don't think that one would affect the next too much. This obviously is going to be your most tender main, moin, uh, main muscle loin. Uh, this might have a little bit more mouthfeel. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it for the loin. Yep. Next up, we're going to do the hind leg, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping to turn that into prosciutto, so we're not going to do too much to that one, are we? We do not have to do very much. But you're going to come back and watch that anyway, so thanks for stopping by. Hope to see you again soon. Bone in, skin on, sirloin roast. Bone in, loin chops. Boneless loin. Back ribs. Bone in, loin. Rack chop. Pork tenderloin.